Our students, Brian Proctor, be our teacher, back again with another lesson. And oftentimes, more like every time, when we start drawing, when we first learn to draw, what we do is we see somebody else's drawing or their position or whatever it is we like, and we say, oh, I like that. Let me draw that. Whether you draw that uh, line from line or you just change it and add your character's costume to it, this is how we start learning to draw. But there comes a time where you say to yourself, oh, I would like to add a background to that. But because you did not initially draw that position, it's hard for you to find where that center line is, where everything might go as far as background. So in this video, I show you guys how to spot your eye line, how to gauge your perspective and put background to your drawings. So if this is you, if you fit in that category, get your pencil and paper and I will see you guys at the drawing table. All right, our students, welcome back to the art table or the drawing table. This is where creations comes to life or where this is where you get your drawings done. All right, so what I want to do today is a little something different. I thought about this. I thought about this this morning as soon as I open my eyes up. And this is usually where I get my good ideas first thing in the morning before everything comes at you like bills and friends and phone calls and appointments and all of that stuff. I get my good idea. So, but the thing is, I've got to get it out before it kind of fades away. So it's not anything that has been scripted or, 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 or you know, step one, step two, step three. So bear with me on this one, but the, the information is going to be good. The knowledge you will receive is good. So I want to start out with the, with, with the 360 book for reference, just for reference guide. All right, so when we first start to draw, we'll see a position that we like, and then we'll say something like, oh man, that's, that's, that's nice, I'm gonna draw that. Okay, so, but the thing is, you know, a lot of times when we see these positions that we wanna draw, they are like right up in your face. And there's nothing wrong with that because when you draw your character, you want your character to be like right there, right, just up in your face. But that doesn't leave you room for doing perspective, shall we say. So this one is going to be about drawing your character and then doing background, putting it in perspective, drawing what you see, and then putting in uh, the background around it. So I'm going to show you how to spot your um, horizon line or your eye line and then work around that to put your background or some type of background and it's just like these positions some of you know some of them i put a little background in you know some of them i did not put a little background in because as i say they're all kind of like in your it's just in your face and um if you have not seen this book before and you get the book uh, some of these are titled and these are just the titles of the videos the the the, the lower the back end are just the videos that i've done and i put the finished product up. So if you see this and you say, oh, wow, that's a tight position. I'm going to draw that. Uh, and you don't know how, you go to my YouTube channel, you look up the name of the drawings on the video, and then, or you look up the title on the video, and it'll show you exactly how to draw this stuff. So the front, in, front of the book is what I'm talking about. It's positions. Say like, but most times you do the position and it's right there in your face. But what if you want to take the position over that eye line or below that eye line? How would you do that? So that's what today's lesson is about. Basically seeing a position that you want to draw and then knowing how to put some background into it. Because when you learn to draw, you start drawing your own positions based on your, the perspective angle that you want. So let's talk about perspective right off the bat. For those who are new to drawing, because it took me a long time to understand perspective, but perspective is really hard and it's really easy. You just have to break it down to its its core essence, I guess. All right, let me turn the paper right here. So this is a, uh, this is a triangle right there. And I put a line in the center of that triangle and I turn it sideways and that's perspective. Believe it or not, that's perspective. So you have one point perspective, you have two point perspective, and you have three point perspective. All right, so we're going to deal with mainly one and two, maybe get into a little bit of three. So 
explaining perspective real quick is like I'm sure you've seen the railroad tracks. You've seen pictures of the railroad tracks. Basically, it's it's converging lines going back to a point. Okay, so if I just drew this one line and I mean, you have to have two lines. Let's just say this is a pole, and this pole goes all the way back to one point where it disappears. That's your, that's that's the point where it disappears. So that's your one point. If you have two points, it means you're going to have a pole that goes back. Let's just do this to a second point. That's going to be your two-point perspective. And the third point is like you have one up here one over here and one over here so you're going to have that connecting triangle again all right so now to just keep that in mind and we'll get into that a little bit more but since i've done this one let me show you you have your two points you have your point here and your point here and you have your triangles going like that and they cross each other they crisscross each other and it gets really weird because if you have too many lines you, you kind of lose you kind of lose it so if I'm doing two point perspective, say like right here, I have my triangle, which I've already started and I've already started. I have it here and I have it here. So this is my eye line, meaning if I look at something, how am I going to see it? If I look at a glass, if I take a glass and I put it on a table and I should have used a box, but I'll just keep going with this. I cannot see the top of this glass I cannot see the bottom of this glass. This glass, I know the glass is round, but when you set it straight on the table, it's flat. So because I cannot see the top, I cannot see the bottom, I'm seeing somewhere in the middle. All right, so that's how I can, that's how I see this if I'm looking at this glass. Now, if I raise up, let's just say I'm kneeling down. If I raised up, I will see the glass like this. So I'm looking above it, so my eye line is going to be above that glass. And same thing, if I'm looking below it, or it's floating in the air, I know people use boxes, but I'm just start out with the glass. Then my eye line it, I'm, is below this somewhere. I'm looking up at it, so my eye line is right here below that. So when you draw a, a character or when you see a character that you want to draw and let me go back to the see if i can get a good one like this guy for instance i did some foreshortening on this just like the box or the glass or just the box if i can't see the top and i can't see the bottom my eye line is in the middle if i see the top that i'm above so think of characters as that box because I can see this guy's shoulders the top of his shoulders I'm above him I cannot see the bottom of his feet so I'm above this guy so taking this guy on for instance I cannot see the top of his shoulders I cannot see the top of his head but I am seeing like under the under the the chest under the thigh uh, yeah it's an above and under. So that means my eye line is going to be, since I'm kind of down below him, my eye line is going to be maybe somewhere, somewhere here. So you have to kind of pick close. You can't be 100% precise if somebody else drew it, but you can look for those telltale signs, shall we say, and then kind of get close. Unless the person has done a city, I don't think I did a city in this in this particular book. Da, 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 da. I did something, but I don't think I did a city in this book. This is like this, but it's a low, it's a low, a low eye line because you're seeing this guy, and these guys are smaller, so it's a low, it's a low, it's a low thing. So again, unless you see somebody did a city or whatever, some buildings. And here's a character. He's right here. Just draw my clothespin man right there. You know that you cannot see the top of this building. You cannot see the top of this building. So you're below here somewhere. And anytime you have a square or something, if somebody, if you get a 
book and I don't have this. This is why my videos are so long. As I go along, I see other things that, that I can address and try to show you. So it's not, I say it's not um, a scripted video. My videos are never really scripted. It's just as I go along, there's more knowledge for you. So anytime you see a picture, like you see a picture of an office or something, go online and then download, you know, office picture or just look at office pictures or, or bedrooms or whatever. And anytime you see a square of the line going at an angle, you can follow, you can follow that to, um, you can follow that down to the point. So where these converge, which it would probably be a little lower, it'll be there because you're under this guy. You're, you're above this guy, so let's 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 take a step back and slow down and do this because I don't want you guys to to get this thing wrong. Whenever you have a room, let's just say, do the buildings again. No, I'm not doing the buildings. I'm doing the shelf. Okay, your your lines are going to go straight to wherever they converge at. So if I'm doing a shelf, let's say, or if you see a shelf or something in a room, and it's going to be the same as the building, Brian, I don't know. I'm talking fast, and there are a lot of things that are popping out of my head, and you see like a bed or something. Perspective is hard because for me, I can't see numbers in my head. I can draw all day, but when you ask me to, you know, what's 23 plus 18 plus 9, I'm like, what? It's just, I can't see numbers in my head. That that, I guess I was born with that weakness, but I can see a body twisted and turned and so forth. So anytime you just see a room, <laughs> picture on a wall, um, doorway, you can kind of follow where these where they go now again if you can't see the bottom of it and a lot of times you won't see especially if somebody's if somebody is um in an action pose and they got the leg up you won't see the bottom of that they cut it off they cut it off i'll, I'll give you an example later so back to this if somebody's drawn a pre-drawn room you can you can easily tell where the horizon line is and so if you got somebody in the room and this person is standing here draw the draw the draw the clothespin man brian and you draw that and you say okay i like this position i want to put some background around him you always you already know where everything falls by just following the converging lines but if you see something maybe somebody just jumping in the air or whatever, or just, just a position where somebody did it like a close up of the person. I don't know. It's hard for me to just draw positions just, just because. Just because. And you say to yourself, where is, make it a little darker, where is, where would the eye line be here so, so I can put some background, you know, to that guy or to that character, or to, that, to that position. So, again, I can't see the top of his head. I can't see this back. Uh, he's leaning forward, so I'm going to see some shoulders, but I'm seeing up under this. So, initially... That's either a running position or a flying position. So I'm going to say that is going to be down here. So there's my eye line right here. So whatever I put uh, around this person, uh, you know anything below it, I'm going to see the top of it. And anything above it, I'm going to see the bottom of it. So that's going to be how you determine where the, um, the eye line is and what you're going to put down or what you're going to draw around that person. Let's just say, okay, my eye line is here. Let's say he's running. Let's give him, let's give him a running because you're below him. And the three things about the, the, the 
perspective, the where is that the point? Where is oops, where is it? You want your no, that's something different. Three things, a couple things about how you position somebody. My desk is messy. It is messy. Whenever I do these videos, it gets messy. If you put somebody, if you put your eye line above something, I'm trying to think what to draw. Let's just say, okay, here, here's some airplanes, okay? Here's some airplanes. They could be fighter jets or whatever, airplanes. And you, your eye line is above, or you are above these planes. You're looking down on them. That gives you a uh, feeling, uh, that gives you, the reader, a feeling of power uh, because you're above them. You're untouchable. I'm looking down at you. You know, I have dominion on you. Um, what else is it? What else? What else? It was, it was right there. It was in my head. Um, you are not part of what's going on because you're above everything. Like I said, they can't touch you. Uh, you're powerful. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm above you. You know, I can step on you. I can do whatever and you can't touch me. You know, also I'm not above. If, if I saw two people fighting, you know, down below, you know, I'm not in that fight. But now if I put myself in the middle of that, like these guys are like right here with each other let's just say like this now i'm above because i'm sure i'm showing your shoulders so i'm going to do it sideways just you know so now my eyeliner is right here so i'm in the middle of this i'm you know i'm i'm connected almost to that fight especially if i drew it big you know i could get hit with a punch or something you know so if i'm if you're below that those people fighting Yeah, come on, come on, draw. I'm not seeing the top of their shoulders. This guy's leaning over, but, you know, here's his leg right there, and it's going to get a little bigger, and this guy's leg is here, and this guy's leg is here. So that is the reverse of this. I'm below these guys. These guys are more powerful than me. These guys can step on me at any time. You know, I'm kind of, like, in danger. Um... They have more power than me because I'm, an, and what is it called? It's called an ant's, a worm's eye view. And this one is the bird's eye view because you're, you're, you're above everything here. And then at any time you draw a bird's eye view, you basically you're forced to draw, draw more, um, more background because everything is going to be smaller because you're above it. So you get your clouds and your, your land, however they go, you know, however, whatever these things are over, they could be over the city. They're going to bomb, you know, a city or whatever, but you're forced to draw, draw more because you're above, as I say. Now, when you're below, you, you're not going to draw too much because you, you whatever uh, is the ceiling, depending on how much of an upper angle you get. And right here, it depends on it depends on your, your scene. It could be other people standing around watching these guys fight. They could have been betting on these guys to, you know, how much how much money the guy's gonna make. All right, so now you know that you got your bird's eye view, your your worm's eye, and your just your, your standard center view. All right, so you see this, you draw this, and I keep saying I'm gonna bring up my magic markers because they are just drying up. And not getting any use usage. So now you say to yourself, okay, I am kind of below this guy somewhere around here. Now using your perspective, is it, do I want to do a one point or two point perspective? You can say to yourself, we got a point here. And every time you do perspective, it's best, especially two point, always two point, it's best to have another piece of paper. I'm flipping that one over. So, say my picture, I'll just do it this way. My picture's here. I said I have one point here. It's always best to take the other point all the way off. That way you can do your triangle, triangles, your lines, 
and it won't get distorted because if it's too close, if your points are too close, then you're going to get the distorted look and it's going to look like the, the mirror on a school bus. You see the mirror on a school bus is rounded, you know, so that you can see from every angle. And, you know, when you get your, your car, um, you can buy those little mirrors, those round mirrors. If you're driving, it's like that because you can see every angle, but everything is like, is turned and they call it that fish eye view because it looks like a fish eye everything is like deformed like that and it's kind of almost the same thing if you if your if your lines are too close together I told you I'm going to be all over the place if your lines are too close together and you're drawing a building let's just put a building right here it's going to be really distorted or you put a person right here, it's going to be really distorted because this is too close. And this one right here is going to be too close as well. So it's best to take one if you're drawing, when you start to do serious background, take it, tape, a, tape a piece of paper to your, um, your original paper and then draw your line. And it's best, this is when you start using red and blue pencils, when you're starting to do perspective, because even though you might not be able to erase everything, if I got my lines going through this guy, keep them light. And I can't erase everything. When you scan it, you scan it on black and white, the red and the blue won't show. So, yeah. All right. So here's my thing. So let's just say I want to do, let's just this point. Okay. Once you get your eye line established, then you have your points. Then you do your grid line and you draw whatever on top of your grid. Where's the blue? My, my little tiny blue. Let's just do this. So let's say he's running. Let's just give that a running one. So I'm gonna do this. Uh, he, he just he just ran. He just left the city. Here's my line. He just left the city right here. So I'm gonna follow these, and it's gotta go to this point here. He just left the city. He's running out of the city. He's the Flash or whatever. So at that point where I know where my my eye line is, I can go ahead and draw in my background. And if you come below the, there are certain rules you can do when you go below that line and certain ones you cannot do. But here I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring these buildings below. So once you go below that, you're going to have to follow that line below that. And then to this. But some of them won't be, some of them will be on the, on, on the line like that so yeah because he's below the line my, my line is right here this foot goes below the line so anything that is below that is going to be there but of course below you're going to see the top so you you don't want to take this building way way down here because that's 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 wrong all right, so now anything you take below this, you have to be careful. As I say, you don't want to go too far. It's best not to bring it down too, too far until you actually know what it is that you're doing because there are going to be, there might be other elements that you put there as well. And then that will take him off of his line. So if his, his foot was on this line here and you had things in the background, you don't want to bring things below his foot line, below the line where his foot is riding. Because there are other elements in play. So you have to be very careful about going above and below the eye line. There was something else I was going to say with that, but stuff is still running through my brain. 25 minutes, 16 seconds. Minus cuts, because I think I cut this thing two times, three times. All right, so, all right, let's use this method here to show you a little bit about the eye line. All right, so we have a person. Let's do a person and a pole. I'll do a person. I'll just do a, no, I got to do a round person. Doing the body, of course, which is always in all videos, you have three main pieces to do the body. Drawing somebody, you have three main pieces. You have your torso, you have your waist, rectangle, and then you have your hips, depending on 
You can have straight hips. Straight hips, it doesn't have to come out like this. It can go straight down. Okay, those are your three components. Center line, oval, circle, circle, triangle. Circle, triangle. Same thing here. Let's go below this. No, it's just, just a little below that. Circle, oval, triangle. Circle, oval, triangle. Your, stop, your wrist stops at your crotch when you're standing. Standing, um, standing up. Even drawing the hand, you can draw this little triangle like this. Flat. Down. Put your thumb. Your finger. Your other finger. Your third finger. Do this. Put your thumb. Curve that line here. This one. Two bends. You don't have that, that much of a bend. Behind that, you have another finger. And behind that, you have another finger. And just round those off. Round those corners off. I mean, it's easy, quick hands if you're drawing. Um small okay so let's do some feet feet are half triangles let's say okay this is my knee this is my calf round it off give it a little more shape to it but in the beginning it's just triangles and then cut it off right here so i'm going to come straight down just cut it off right here come straight down and out straight down and out so if you put these two together it's just basically a triangle that got separated and you flatten the top off that's all it is so if i drew somebody if I drew this and I drew them standing, still their legs would be like this. Feet would be together. Hopefully you can see that because I tend to draw light sometimes. I like this the red pencil because I like the bite that it gives on the paper. It's not, it's not like just like if you certain ink pens, certain ink pens you get they're so wet and messy it just slide across the table some are so dry you have to bear down and some are just perfect to have that good bite so here's my v right here rectangle and then my my um head okay so that's my body so now if i take a pole let's take this pole if i do he's standing next to a pole I will take this pole even down a little further, up a little higher. So, and this is this is, this gets into dressing the character because someone asked me to do a video on dress, putting clothes on a character, and I'll do that in the next video. But as I said, I woke up and this was in my head, so I said, let me do this while it's fresh. All right, so if I put my center line right here on this character, well, the actual center of a character, I think it's down here, to be honest somewhere but I'm gonna put that down there the actual center of a character if you're six feet you got three feet and three feet so three feet is not gonna be in a waist it's gonna be down here somewhere so let's just say this so if I took this pole and I put some stripes on it and this is perspective I'm using perspective this, this is gonna be distorted because as I said it's too close before take your lines off so here's my triangle triangle yeah on my cone, triangle, cone. Here's my triangle and my cone. Now, because my eye line is right here, this stripe is going to be just, even though this is round, even though this is round, you take something round you take, and take take this and you put something on it, it's going to be round. Whereas I don't have a piece of tape, I'm going to take a blue piece of tape, but that might be for the next video. It's going to be round now. As you look up, if you tilt your head and look up, this thing is going to start to get rounder. I'm going to exaggerate a lot. The higher it goes, the rounder it's going to be. And I am exaggerating until you can't you see the top of the pole ends here. It's going to be round. So as you go down, it's going to start rounding off, rounding off, rounding off, rounding off until you see the bottom of the pole. But you cannot see the top or the bottom because you are right there in the center. And that's going to be the same thing with um, your character. As if you're in the center, you're going to start rounding stuff off, <clears throat> exaggerating. You, If you're straight on, and this is his, his line here, this belt is going to kind of go the opposite way. 
the shoulders are going to round off like this. Let me get this blue. The shoulders are going to round off. You're not going to see the top of him. This belt is going to be round. And as you go uh, to the bottom, let's just say he's got some boots on. As you go down, it, the boots are going to be like this. They're going to round off. Same thing if you have a watch or wristband on it, because this is the center, it's going to be almost straight like this, almost just a little bit. But if it has another band around here, you're going to get like that. And again, almost straight like this. So whenever you see your pos uh, your um, a position, where's my book again? Where's my book? Where, oh, find a position. Probably this one. You are going to start rounding that character off, just like that pole. You're going to start rounding that character off, and you're going to find out where is the middle of this and that determines well this one you know he's up in the air because you see the bottom of this guy but you're going to see you're going to know where your eye line is and where you can put your background how your background is going to go in to come on, how your background is going to go into your background because of the lines like this, like I said, we always tend to draw the character right there because we want to show our characters. We want them to be in the face. We don't want them to be so small in the background. We want to put them up in your face so you can say, wow, that's a nice character. But as I say, when you start doing that center, everything should start rounding off so you'll know exactly where to put your eye line. Once you get your eye line established, you can go far as back as you need to put that point, to put those two points, to put whatever you decide to put in there. Let's do this quick rough sketch. What is it? 36 minutes? A quick rough sketch of a couple of things and see if I can get that right. Let's just say you saw a position like, and I think, I know I got it in the, in the book, but I'll just, just expound on it. All right, looking at this as I was drawing incredibly fast, if you do something like this and your eye line is here, basically what you're doing is you're in this background. What you're doing is you're rolling stuff down this hill and you really don't want that unless you want that. So what would have been better if I had put everything on that? If I had dropped my eye line and put everything above and stayed away from eye line, eye line put everything on that eye line and then avoided anything below that so let me redo this real quick if i can i can i can let's do this here's my eye line right here so i'm going to put the guy again three pieces one and you have to be careful how how long you make that two wow he's leaning hard one two three center line and I'm not going to go above that. So let me put something that he can stand up on. And then his leg. And this is going to be the edge of the picture itself. This is going to be my, my, my border. This is the frame that the picture is in. Can't see the top. So his collarbone is going to be pretty much way up there. Right there. So anything, as I say, anything above, now I've got my buildings. My, my, my point could be way out here. Now I've got my buildings here. More buildings there. And of course, I'm not going directly to that eye line because I'm I'm doing you know stuff really quickly and can buildings could be way out of the frame as well and if I put that car that car is going to be depending on how high up this guy is off the ground he's way up off the ground so you know you're only going to see the top of that car because he's way up off the ground his knee is right here so we got all his leg down here 
So if this was the ground, and depending on where the car was uh, located uh, next to him, let's just say if it's right there, you're not going to see too much of that. You're going to see the top of that car. This is the other point. I'll keep drawing it, but this this other point you won't. This other part you won't see unless you lift it up a little bit more. So this is all the frame you would see. And if you saw an airplane flying overhead, same airplanes that's coming to bomb the city. He needs to get on his P's and Q's so he can save the world. So again, because this is down here, this is going to be turned. I mean, you, you draw it the way you draw it, but then you stop and you say, okay, now this has got to be like this. I'm looking up at this guy. I'm seeing under here. So anything on him is going to be turned. The chest is going to be turned like this. Anything on that arm is going to be <clears throat> uh, turned straps or whatever. The um, wristbands, same thing. And that gives you that up look. That gives you that up effect. And I'm trying to keep all my papers together so I can grab it to, to show you what I'm saying. So the same thing as the pole, again, the more up you look, the more curve it's going to have. Same thing, up look, curve on everything. So I know it wasn't 47 minutes because I did do some cuts, but hopefully I got to the point because as I say, this is not script. And as I go along, other things come out and I try to show you as, as I'm going something in my head enters my head and say oh do that show them that and that's what makes my videos long but if you're really into learning they're not long enough uh, I think there was one more thing that I wanted to show you about a circle or triangle or something like that and I don't remember what it is but your two-point perspective quickly again are two cones like that and one point is basically you take this cone and you're looking right in the center of it. And then you have the lines come out this way. It's kind of like radiating out. And I used to say an explosion. If you think of an explosion, a star exploding and everything comes out. That's one point. And that's the same thing we did with this here. So if I had my one point here and all my lines were coming out. And if I did it correctly, everything would fall on one of those converging lines, especially the shelf. So, yeah, enough said with that. This was your lesson for today. I don't know what kind of I'm going to do. Maybe I'll ink them and use it as a thumbnail. We'll see. All right, that's going to be it. Hopefully you did learn something out of this. And it was correct. <laughs> but I will see you guys next week. I try to put them up every Friday and Saturday now. I'm back on track. So I will see you guys. And as I say, if you learn something, if you learn one thing, do me a good favor so that um, I'll see that you do appreciate it. Is just take one second and hit that like button. Hit the like button. That's, that's the only one. Just hit the like. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to comment. Just the like button is all I'm asking for. All right. That's going to be it. See you guys later.